Hi kids, welcome back. We're looking at lesson 4.7, Grace to Persevere. So Mr. Garcia, once again, we're gonna be looking at, this is our second last class for the year. As Ms. Elisa was saying, we only have now two more lessons to go. So good for you boys and girls, thank you for making it this far. I also thank you thank to your uh, parents and guardians for working alongside with, with you and us with them to get through another one a year. It's been so fast. It's been uh, quite a different year this time around, but we thank the Lord that through it all, we've been able to get together and continue in his word. So let's pray because it's very fitting that our lesson today is, like I said, grace to persevere, 4.7. So let's continue. Dear Heavenly Father, we come together today in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, to thank you so much, Lord, for the wonderful thing that it is to know you and to be known by you, Lord. So we thank you. Thank you that we're able to persevere and only through your grace, Lord, we're able to do that. Even through difficulties and hardships, Lord, we've been able to persevere. We thank you. And and more than anything, I thank you, along with our um, our leaders also, that we are very inspired by the perseverance of our uh, TNT kids. So thank you for all these things. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. So let's get started. First of all, I want to see what the definition of perseverance is. So if you have a dictionary, but uh, you can look it up. I can give you time to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to read it off for you. So perseverance means, so it's a verb that says to continue in a course of action, even, so listen to this part, so continue a course of action, so keep doing what you're doing, even in the face of a difficulty or with little or no prospect of success. So you keep going, even though you might think it's not going to work out, you keep going. But for our uh, purposes, we're going to stick to the first definition, which is to continue in a course of action even in the face of difficulty. So you continue, you persevere. So even in, when things go diff, uh, tough, you persevere, keep going, you keep going, you keep going. Your, your parents, uh, teachers, uh, you might have uh, heard them say to, to do that, to persevere. Sometimes it's difficult because some of you are uh, involved in sports and you have to practice, you have to keep going. You might lose a game, you might lose a couple games. You might not come in first place, you might not even come uh, on the podium and that's okay and it's fine it's completely completely fine you keep working at it and as long as you have fun it's good you know it's a great blessing for you to be able to do that but you persevere keep going uh for me i remember when i was about your age boys and girls my most difficult class was mathematics so math i love math but i wasn't very very good at it at the beginning but i had to do it because you know it's cool so you have to do it so you, uh, I got my dad to help me out and we persevered and I was able to get through it and I enjoyed it even more. So I took something that was a bit of a hardship and through perseverance and help, in this case from my dad, I was able to turn into something that I actually enjoyed. But this was through persevering, so not giving up. Now, you might think of that, you were asked to think of a time where you, you thought that, um, that you have to persevere through difficult times. So let's look at an example you might have already read the story of Sidrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but if you have your Bible there with you, let's look at Daniel chapter 3. The story is a little longer, but we're only going to read a couple of verses. Daniel chapter 3, which is in the Old Testament, verses 19. And, sorry, verses 16. Yeah, 16 all the way to 18. And it says this, Daniel 3, 16, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So a little bit of context. If you don't know the story, if you're not familiar with it, Shidrach, Meshach, and Abednego were part of Daniel's friends, circle of friends, closer friends. They were very, very wise men. They had a lot of wisdom given by God, and they were very honest, very humble, and very obedient men. And along with Daniel, they obeyed the Lord, and they put his their God, which is our God, first above all things. And that was their priority, to serve their Lord. So it had happened that the king Nebuchadnezzar made a statue, like an idol, very big, and was at, and he asked order the people to worship it. So they would play the music and the trumpets, timbrels, back by parps, all these instruments, and they would bow down and worship this, this, this image, this statue. But these men, these three men would not do it. So they gave him another chance, and again, they would not do it. So they got into big trouble. They went to the king, 
And that's what they gave the king as an answer. They said, we're not going to do it. So no matter what, we're not going to bow down to this idol. Why? You might already know the answer, boys and girls, because God doesn't want us to do that. That's part of the commandments. We should not bow down to idols or idol worship. And that's exactly what they were being asked to do. So they knew that it was much, much better for them to obey God's command than even the king, because the king's command went against God's command. So when the king's command go against God's command, they listen to God first. And so they said, we're not going to do it. And the king threatened them to be put into a fire furnace if they weren't, uh, if they didn't bow down. And they said, doesn't matter. We all were worth, we are willing to lose our lives over it. It's okay, because we're not going to bow down to this and disobey our God. And he's going to save us. But even if he doesn't save us, it says in verse 18, but if, if not, be a note to you, king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So either way, they weren't going to obey the king because they had to obey God. So why are we reading this? Well, because this is a very difficult time for them, obviously, because they were life was at risk that they could lose their lives over it. But so they went through that hardship. Before that, there were other hardships as well and others. So this was a series of difficulties that Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego and Daniel as well went through. Daniel, you know, he went into the dens, uh, the lion's den. So there was a lot of difficulties. There were persecutions, they were accused, a lot of things, but they persevered, they persevered, and persevered. So they would not say no. They would continue to worship God above all things, and they continued and continued that course of action, even through the, through the face of difficulty. So boys and girls, by God's grace, we, we don't face these difficulties. We're not facing these types of hardships as our friends here in the Bible did. But we do face difficulties even in our own lives, maybe not at that level, but it is still quite difficult for us sometimes to go through life. So you might not face this, but you might face that perhaps maybe all your friends do something and you're the only one out of this huge crowd or of your class or friends or whatever it is that you're not doing it. And that's okay because you're thinking this is not right, but God does not want me to do this. So you persevere in your faith. So I want you guys, if you forget everything else, the one thing that we, uh, the Bible tells us is to persevere in our faith and continue continue in, in prayer as well so we continue in our faith because we're not alone so you'll see in our in your in your study here in your book that even though we will face hard times because god told us to god well christ who is god told us we would face difficulties we were not going to be alone he was going to be with us we see that in romans 8 28 says that we will not be alone we will not be by ourselves god is with us throughout all of this and i'll read it to you here romans 8 28 and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. He is there with us, and he is helping us along the way. Let's look at Philippians 4.12, and I'll read it to you. It says this, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. So what Paul is saying to us here in the book of uh, Philippians 4.12 is that he learned how to get through all the circumstances. But see, boys and girls, here's the thing. Even though it was Paul, we know Paul, a very famous uh, apostle and very, very faithful, very, very obedient to the Lord. It says that he learned the secret of facing whether it's plentifulness, so he's abundance, so lots of stuff, lots of good things. Or hunger, so not so good things, and he needed food, and he went through hunger. So even though he was Paul, he still went through times of hunger. But he learned the secret of facing all those things, and in any and every circumstance, he learned it. So what I want you guys to see in the Bible, what the, what God is teaching us, is that do not, we shouldn't complain when we go through difficulties but rather ask God that, that he helps us to go through them and to thank God more than anything, the thing I, that uh, the Bible tells us is to be thankful through all circumstances. And that helps us to learn how to go through these troubling times. And today we're facing something that no one has ever faced before, right? As when we're in lockdown and the COVID situation, all these things worldwide, everybody's going through difficult circumstances. One thing is that, we know that God is mighty, that God is sovereign, 
and God is, has mm -hmm. not turned his back against us. He is with us. So one of the ways that we learn in the Bible that we can face adversity and persevere is this. So if you forget everything, remember, remember this one, is to prayer, to prayer and supplication. So on our knees, pray. Well, you don't have to be on your knees all the time, but just pray. Sometimes we're on our knees, sometimes standing up, sometimes we might be in the car, sometimes we're giving uh, thankfulness for food. So wherever, in every circumstance, just through prayer. Prayer is very, very, very powerful thing that God gave us. It's like a tool God gives us to go through trials and tribulations through prayer, through prayer and prayer and prayer and prayer. And when we go through and persevere through prayer, we then pray again to thank God for being able to get through difficult kinds of situations. Now, to finish off our lesson, let's look at your memory verse, which is Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. And it says the following, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Let's read that one more time. Deuteronomy 31, 6 says the following. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. What does forsaking mean? Forsaking means, or to be fors uh, to forsake, it says to aban uh, abandon or to give up on something, to abandon it. So God is telling us he will not leave us or abandon us. So leave us, he's not going to leave us by ourselves right there. He is not going to do that. Now that's called a promise. And what God promises, he fulfills. He says, I will not leave you or forsake you or abandon us. So what is he telling us? He's asking us to be strong and courageous. Through. So there's going to be many, many times we're going to have to be very strong and very courageous. Now, we don't all have that kind of strength or courage, but we know that God can give it to us if we ask him. Because we can ask God, and we have to be very honest, boys and girls, and we can cry out to the Lord and say, uh, dear Heavenly Father, I this is the situation I'm facing. It is very difficult for me or maybe my family or family member. And I need help. Like, I really do need your help, please. I need to be strong. I need to be courageous. You asked me to be that, but I can't find a way for me to have that. Can you please help me be strong and be courageous? Because I know that you promised that you will not leave me and you will never forsake me. How do I know that's true? It's because it's right here. It's in your word, and the, your word is truth. So we can ask God to help us, and he will get us through those difficult times and situations. And instead of, it, um, instead of us being uh, hurt by them in such a way, by not being with God, we'll face it together with him, and instead we'll learn from the circumstance, we'll mature as well, and, as, and again, our love for the Lord and our closest to God will great, go even stronger. As through trials and tribulations, Sometimes is where our strength comes from because we see the hand of God in our lives day in and day out through these difficult situations. So boys and girls, I don't want you and our leaders, I, I know uh, together with myself, we don't want you to ever forget that you're not alone. You might feel lonely, but you're not alone. It's okay to feel lonely sometimes. So whenever you feel lonely, just pick up your Bible, read a couple of verses, read a couple of chapters, read your Bible, go through memory verses that you learn or want to. So I'm talking even later on when you're 20, when you're 30, when you're 50 years old. The verses that you're learning and you're writing in your heart, go through them. And I know God, my God, your God is going to remind you, even if it's 60 years later in the future, he's going to remind you of these key verses to be strong and courageous and to be able to put your life in God's hand because he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. We human beings, we make mistakes. We make, we were fault at our fault in many times, but God is perfect. There is no shadow variance in him. He is constant. He is our rock and our salvation. He is our God. So remember that, always bring everything to God into prayer and he will give us the ability and the strength in his word in, in prayer to continue and to continue in the course that we selected as the great uh, hymn says, we have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back, no turning back. And that, boys and girls, very sweetly and very beautifully, I have decided to follow Jesus, not turning back. It's exactly what perseverance means. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come together today in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, to thank you so much, Lord, because <clears throat> you teach us the importance of perseverance. You teach us that we should not turn back, 
that we should look forward, Lord, because you are with us. You come alongside with us. We are not alone. You are with us. There will be troubles. There will be uh, difficulties. There will be anxieties. There will be worries. There will be a lot of things in life. To such is life, Lord. But you are with us because you are life. So we thank you. I ask you, Lord, that tonight and, 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 and every one of these uh, boys and girls, Lord, and today that we can have your peace, the peace that you offer us. Lord, as the world gives, you give it to us, Lord. So thank you. But help us go through difficult times. You are human beings, and sometimes it's very, very tough. It is very difficult. But Lord Jesus, we can trust that you went through difficult times and you persevered. And not just because you are the Son of God, it didn't mean you had to persevere through difficulties. You're the ultimate example of perseverance, and you're glorified and sit at the right hand of your of God, your Father, so we, for all eternity. So we thank you for the example, the perfect example of perseverance. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. Great. Have a great night with your Sunday school teachers, with your TNT teachers, boys and girls. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.